Better than the first version, I think Zoe thinks, right? Hey, what's up, you guys? Shardimus Prime here, doing another Transformers action figure review on the Transformers The Last Night Movies Premiere Edition Deluxe Class Dinobot Slug. If you're trying to get your Transformers figures, you can get them at Big, big, big. Get your big, badass toys at BigBadToyStore.com. Click the link in the description below. So, we are getting another repaint from Hasbro, and it actually looks like a very good repaint. I like the color choices right here so far, but it is a repaint. We got a nice image of Slug right on the side of the packaging, looking pretty nice, I like that. I get the Autobot symbol right there. And then on the back you can see a couple of product shots, and then here's a couple other figures from this wave. And then on the side it says Dinobot Slug Fiery Warrior right over there. And then on the very top we can see Optimus Prime, Drift, and Bumblebee, and when it says Fiery Warrior right there, is it going to breathe fire like how he did in the G1 cartoon? Ooh, I hope so. Anyway, let's get to it and crack this thing open. And here Here's Slug out of the packaging, and this is a pretty decent repaint. I can't recommend this figure for everybody, but if you missed out on the previous Age of Extinction Dinobots, uh, you may want to add this to your collection, especially because he was in Age of Extinction, I think he was in the last night. I was kind of dozing off, I have this vague memory of seeing Slug in the last night. Please remind me in the comments below whether he was actually in the movie or not. Of course we got the Slash figure and that figure, or that character was definitely not in the last night. Unless I missed that too, but yeah, pretty sure he didn't appear in that movie. So anyway, this does look a lot better. I do like this gold and we get some very nice faded paint going on throughout on this guy. So it's definitely worth taking a closer look at, but first let's get a closer look at his incredibly awesome accessories. You know, I'm being kind of sarcastic, but you know, these are actually pretty decent for his robot mode. It's just that these swords are just really no good for his dino mode. Uh, you just poured them into the side like how you did before. And yeah, so now you can have the flying slug, which really makes no sense at all. Except for that one part where he was dangling, right? And he was dangling in the air. It is what it is. And they're very soft and everything. And they're kind of bent. So if you want to heat these up to straighten them out, you could do that. I keep trying to figure out a different way to have these uh, displayed on the figure, you know? Like I always thought it would be kind of cool if you could like set them up in a way where they're kind of sticking over his shoulders, you know? Just to add to the horns that are already sticking out there. But yeah, that, that, that's all you're going to get. But yeah, porting into the sides right over here. That, that's all you're really going to get as far as stable storage. If you have any creative ways of having these displayed on the dyno mode, please let me know. <laughs> So here's looking at the head sculpt of Slug, and you can see the seam image right over there from the transformation. I mean, that's kind of expected, but what we're really looking at here, more than anything else, is just the paint, because we get some nice gold paint on here. It does have red eyes. I prefer my Dinobots having blue eyes, but, you know, the red makes sense, I guess, you know, because he's mostly this very light-colored blue throughout. And we get this very dull gray right over here for the horns and for the lower jaw. See the teeth right in there, and then you can see right here on his arm how it fades from the gold into the blue. I really like that a lot. He had little gold toes, and then on the side you can see some more fading of the gold right into the blue. And I like how on the top of the figure it's consistently one color. Well, it kind of fades right over here on the tail, but still that doesn't really bother me. I mean, mostly it's just all gold right over here on the very top. And looking on the side, doesn't look too bad. You can see more of the gold fading into the light blue color. And he has gold toes right there on the hind legs as well. Look at that gold plastic. And it's fairly consistent. You can see a little bit of variance in the color right over here, but I don't know. I think that looks pretty good. And then there's the underbelly of Slug. Not looking too shabby. And the articulation on this guy isn't really too crazy. Uh, you get the jaw movement right over there. Uh, you can move his head down. It doesn't really move up so much. And you can't rotate it at all. Uh, the shoulders on the front legs just move forward and back this much. You can move them outward just a little bit like that. So you can get him to, you know, some kind of like squatting poses if you want him to. Uh, he can't really move his arm arms or his legs pack that much though and he does have uh, elbows that bend in that much and it won't rotate at all and then the hind legs move back a bit and you can move them forward just 
a little bit, and then he has the toe articulation due to the transformation, and the tail can move up and down, but yeah, not a whole lot of articulation on this guy. And then measuring slug uh, from the horn right over there to the tip of the tail, you're looking at about, what, just uh, about six and a half inches? Then he's just under three inches tall. And then for your slug comparison, we have the Age of Extinction retail version of slug, and then we have our The Last Night retail version right here. And I gotta say, if in the movie he had just a little bit of purple in him, I would have liked this one more, but no, and it, this definitely looks more film accurate, you know. Neither of them are actually perfect, but still, yeah, this newer version right here does look a lot better, I think, you know. So, yeah, I kind of like the different color theme going on still, you know. I, I don't know. It's like I don't totally want to get rid of this guy right here. And then here's Slug next to our other two Dinobot repaints. If we had a whole set of Dinobots, all seven of them, with this kind of color scheme, you know, mixing in more silver, gold, and blue, I think that would actually look really cool. But I do have to say that Slug does look a bit out a place having so much gold, you know? Uh, having him with, I don't know, just maybe a little bit more silver than gold would be pretty nice, but still, I like how the three of these look together. It doesn't look too shabby, right? I don't know. I don't think it looks too bad. And then pairing Slug to another Deluxe Class The Last Night figure, we have Deluxe Class Barricade, who I know was definitely in the movie, but yeah, you can see how, eh, you know, both fairly, yeah, more or less the same size. And to get on to the transformation, which is pretty simple, we well, takes away Bumblebee! Come on, Bumblebee, you can do better than that. There we go. Okay, so I like to start from the back right over here, lift this up, and then fold that in right there. And then we're going to take the legs, and then take the toes, fold that in, and then fold out the other feet right there, and then move that down, and swing this around, fold in the toes, fold out the toes right there. And then we're going to split all this right in half right here. So the face, I'm going to start with the face because that's a little bit easier. Get going, yeah, come on, come on face, there we go, and then we have the sides, you want to untab these, these are tabbed into the side of him, so you want to untab those, and that's all going to splay out like so, then these will become the arms, swing out the hand, fold that up right there, swing out the other hand, fold that up right there, and then you're going to want to make sure that you fold this piece in, fold that piece in right there, and then the dino, uh, now this gets a little finicky because you want to make sure that you don't bump into the crest right over here, but you want to fold in those uh, front dino legs and tab them into the little ports that you can see right there on his ribs. So we're going to port that one in and then take this other side and swing this past the crest right there and going to tab that one in right, right there and then swing the legs down. And then get the arms all moved downward, move that, and we pretty much have Slug in his robot mode. And this is where the figure really shines for me. I really like how it looks with this color scheme. This looks so much better than the retail version in my opinion. I really like how this came out. Uh, this little piece right here bothers me still, but I do like how, the, I mean, just look at that, man. That, that just looks really cool. I really like how the gold and the light blue mixes in together throughout on this guy. It's just a very good looking piece to me. So anyway, let's get a closer look. So when we transform this figure into robot mode, we get a new color for this figure. We get this very dark blue. I'm going to call it midnight blue because it does look like a midnight blue color right over there. So I like that. That's pretty neat. Get some very nice red paint right over here for the visor. And then the silver right there for the helmet looks really good too. I'm liking the Autobot symbol right there. That's actually the only Autobot symbol on the whole figure. So it looks pretty clean. It's in black. And I just really like how this figure looks with the gold and the light blue mixed in together. It just looks really cool to me. I'm really digging that a lot. I just really appreciate that. And the swords definitely work well for him in his robot mode. I'm liking that a lot. Uh, one thing I didn't mention is that while transforming this guy, uh, it is easier tabbing these arms in from the back side. Uh, it's just a little tip, so yeah, take it if you want, but yeah, that, that helped me a little bit. Those tabs are a little frustrating, uh, but yeah, looking on the back right there, again, I do like how these spikes look. And then it's just mostly dino mode that you're seeing on the very back of it, but the legs look pretty good right here for robot mode. I like how that looks. I just really like how the whole figure has blue and gold mixed in throughout, you know? It's just a very nice looking palette. I just think it looks very cool to me. And for articulation, there's not a whole lot going on here. Uh, you can't really move the head up. It does move down a little bit. You do get side to side movement, but it doesn't move side to side. Well, I guess I was going to say this is getting in the way a little bit, but you can rotate it all the way like so. It's just kind of tricky. A little bit of head wobblage right there. Uh, shoulders can move outward. They move down. You can rotate 360, even though it's very tricky to do. Actually, I'm just going to say that you can't move 360 because, yeah, the head 
does get in the way. Uh, due to transformation, he does have a butterfly joint at the shoulder too. And then you can bend him at the elbow and he does have a bicep swivel right over here. And then I guess you can just hinge the hands in and out. He does have a waist cut, which I really like a lot. And that's not due to the transformation that's just given to us. And you can see that arm popped out right there. Again, that's kind of tricky. I, I just don't like how these pop out on me. That's kind of frustrating. Uh, the hip joints move outward pretty far. And that's pretty sweet. And you can get them kicking forward really high up and back a bit, depending on how far you move that butt flap. There you go. You get an upper thigh cut. You get two joints at the knee uh, due to transformation. So he actually has one joint right there, but you can bend it twice if you wanted to do that, which kind of looks weird. So yeah, just stick to the one joint that bends in very far. And then I guess you can move the toes or the feet down and up like that. And and that's about it. And a measure of this slug figure in his robot mode, you can see to the top of his head, he's just a bit over five inches tall, but to the top of those horns, he's over six inches tall. And then here's all four slugs that I have in my collection side by side over here. I think there is a fifth version that I don't have, which I'm not really interested in getting. I think that's the one that kind of looks like this platinum version over here, which I have to say is the only version that you really need to get. And I did transform him a little bit differently with the arms upward, but yeah, that is by by far my definite favorite slug figure out of the four of these. Next I would say is the STCC G1 exclusive. I mean, that just looks really cool, having all that chrome and everything. And then, I don't know, I'd have to say the Last Night version, and then lastly, the AOE version right over here, which I actually still like. Seeing him in robot mode, it's not like I hate this purple version over here. It's just, man, yeah, that one's definitely the best. And then here's Slug next to our Grimlock and Slash repaints. And again, these three look very good together side by side. And does anybody know for sure if we're getting more Dinobot repaints in the future? I don't know. If you know, let me know in the comments below. And then comparing Slug to another sword-wielding Autobot, we have the Deluxe Class Drift from the last night. And you can see Slug's a bit taller. And then comparing Slug to your average 6-inch scale figure, here he is next to the Marvel Legends Big Time No Letdown Spider-Man. So I don't think this figure is going to be in high demand once it hits retail shelves. Uh, it's just not. Uh, I mean, Grimlock is already shelf-warming like crazy, right? I mean, just go to your local Target or Walmart or whatever, and you're going to see just just a ton of Grimlocks sitting around. Same thing with the slashes, and there's gonna be a ton of slugs just sitting on the shelf, keeping them all nice and warm and cozy for whichever next shelf warmer comes through. So yeah, I can't see a ton of people getting excited for this, but it's not bad looking. I gotta say, I really do like how he looks in his robot mode. I, that just looks cool to me. Anyway, I hope you guys thought this was a cool review. If you did, please hit the like button. Go ahead and leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think of this figure. Let me know what you think of the review. If you have not subscribed, already, please hit that subscribe button. If you haven't hit the notification bell so you can join the notification squad, please go ahead and do so so you know immediately when my videos are posted. And I gotta give a big thanks to these awesome people for supporting this YouTube channel. I have some Marvel Legends Homecoming Spider-Man figures to give away for July. So if you want to sign up for that, you can go ahead and join Team Shardimus. Link in the description below. And you can see a photo gallery of images coming up soon at shardimusprime.net. I'll catch you guys later. Shot, we 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 shot,